Most people are sure that humans only have five senses, but that's not entirely true. Taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing aren't the only ones we have. Scientists claim that people have between 9 and 20 senses in total. These include thermoception, the sense of warmth, equilibrioception, the sense of balance. There's also the sense of time, although not everyone seems to have that last one. We used to think that there were just eight different blood types, but in reality, there are over 30 known blood group systems. Here on the bright side, our favorite blood group is B positive. Get it? For every pound of fat you gain, you generate one mile of new blood vessels to supply oxygen and nutrients to your body. Your stomach produces a new lining every six days to avoid digesting itself. Nerve cells transmit 1,000 nerve impulses a second. They travel between 1 and 268 miles per hour. Our DNA contains 100,000 viruses. Scientists have discovered one that goes back 100 million years. Your body emits visible light. You're the brightest at 4 p.m., and your glow is the least visible at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Sweat is mostly water mixed with proteins, sugars, ammonia, and a lot of other stuff. It even contains tiny amounts of trace metals like copper, zinc, nickel, iron, and so on. What makes sweat taste salty is the sodium it contains. Plus, the more salt you eat, the saltier your sweat is. Your body's trying to get rid of the excess, and the fastest way is to sweat it out. If you walked 2 miles per hour, you'd have to walk for 20 hours straight to lose 1 pound. And it would take you 518 days and 8 hours to circle the equator. Earwax isn't actually wax. It contains fat, skin cells, sweat, and dirt. Your brain gets three times bigger over the first year of life and reaches its full maturity when you're 25. 60% of it is fat. Your brain generates around 23 watts of electrical power, which is enough to run a small light bulb. Humans can't really multitask. Your brain can't perform more than one action at the same time. It switches between them, which doesn't save time as you might think, but increases the possibility you'll do something wrong and makes the process longer. When you have an exam to take, or you're at work trying to focus on an important task, try chewing gum. Research showed it can help you stay concentrated for longer on tasks that require your full attention. Studies even say that it's a better test aid than caffeine. There's nothing special in the gum, but the act of chewing wakes your brain up. The effect doesn't last long though, just for 20 minutes. Embryos develop fingerprints at three months. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Sunburn is the result of radiation exposure. When your body's natural defense mechanism gets overwhelmed trying to fight UV rays, a toxic reaction occurs that results in sunburn. Goosebumps are an evolutionary reflex left over from our ancestors. The release of adrenaline made their hair stand up, and they look scarier to approaching predators. Your body produces one to three pints of saliva every day. It helps you digest food and fights off infections. You also have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. Yeah, that's right. The average amount of bacteria in a person's mouth is almost the same as the number of people living on Earth. That's hard to digest. Each human has roughly 150,000 hairs on their head. Every strand grows around one half an inch per month. If we added the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles in just one year. Your hair is also a lot stronger than you think. A single strand can hold three ounces, which is the weight of an apple. If we combine the strength of all the hair on your head, it could support the weight of two elephants. Hey, let's try it. The beating sound your heart makes is the clap of valve leaflets opening and closing. Your heart doesn't replicate itself unless you have an injury. Your corneas are the only part of your body that don't get blood. They get oxygen directly through the air. When you're sitting or standing upright, it's easier for you to recall some positive memories that make you feel good. Some believe it's because sitting up with your back flat boosts blood flow and your brain gets more oxygen, which helps it function better. 
the man who has the deepest voice in the world, and that's definitely not me, can produce sounds that humans, including him, can't hear at all. But elephants can hear those sounds. Veins look blue because light has to go through layers of skin and fat to reach them. Your skin scatters a lot of the red portion of white light before it reflects the blood. This leaves only the blue light to bounce back to your eyes. What about the urge to re-watch your favorite movies or listen to your songs over and over? You're not alone. This habit has some benefits for your mental health. This behavior eases your mind. When people feel overwhelmed, they'll have less self-control and be less motivated to complete hard tasks. You are drawn into The Office's first season again because when you watch, listen, or do something familiar, you don't have to spend the effort to monitor what you're thinking. So, it's a good way to have a quick mental reset. Here's another feeling. Imagine you're enjoying the sunset on a terrace or at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Out of nowhere, your inner voice whispers, what if I jump? This isn't coming from a darker state. You know, it's just sort of a feeling that appears when you're high up. There is a name for this. The call of the void or the high place phenomenon is a relatively new research topic, but more studies are on the way. Jim Carrey's great performance in The Truman Show is surely remembered. Did you know that The Truman Show delusion is an actual thing? The phenomenon is an issue related to cognitive neuropsychiatry. People with this delusion believe that they're being filmed and that the footage will be broadcasted for entertainment. There was a time when aluminum was more precious than gold. I know, it's hard to believe. We now wrap our sandwiches on this everyday item. If we go back to the 19th century, we would see aluminum as a hard-to-get element because it was literally hard to obtain until innovators found a way to extract it on large industrial scales. Then, the reign of aluminum was over. There are stories about the French ruler Napoleon III having an aluminum cutlery set that he served food to his special guests. We might as well talk about a time traveler's party held in 2009. The theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking invited time travelers to hang out. There was a huge banner hung up with the words, Welcome, time travelers. No one showed up. But maybe travelers had prior engagements, and that's why they didn't attend the party. I swear I'm not crying because no one showed up to that awesome party. I was just cutting an onion. Why do we burst into tears when we chop onions? Because of a particular enzyme. Is there a solution? Next time, get some damp paper towel and put it on the cutting board next to the onion. The acidity that comes from the enzyme will go towards the wet paper instead of your eyes. The ancient Egyptian civil calendar was quite similar to the one we use now. They had 365 days divided into 12 months. But instead of spreading a 31st to some months, they would add those extra days to the end of the year. Now, let's turn our cameras to the animal kingdom again. Is there a benefit for zebras to have their fascinating pattern? Scientists asked this question too and experimented. They dressed up horses with zebra look-alike coats. The coat was covering the whole body of the horses but their heads. It turns out that zebra patterns repel flies. Scientists observed that flies only go for the heads of the animals and stay away from the horse bodies. Ants are known as hard-working animals, even in the tails. That's got a legit reflection in real life. They can carry up to 20 times more weight than their own body weight. These insects have other noble qualities too. If an ant gets seriously injured, it'll refuse treatment from the colony's paramedic ant. The ant knows that it can't make it, so instead of wasting the colony's resources, this ant forces the paramedic ant to carry on without it. Camels can survive around 15 days without drinking water. Many people assume that they store water in their humps. No, nope, humps are for food storage in the form of fat. The water is kept in their bloodstream. Speaking of camels, in some countries, there's a tradition to hold camel beauty contests. For instance, a contest was held in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar as an attraction. You see a giant housefly in the house, but it flees from your ninja's hands. You might think that nature will take care of it in a couple of days, but actually, houseflies can live for about a month or two. 
The next fact is about an emergency on the road. Detachable car headrests can be used as an escape tool. You can break the window with the headrests if you can't leave the car by the doors. You should wedge the headrest between the glass and the windowsill. Aim a corner. Then, you hit the headrest as hard as you can to break the glass safely. You might have to hit a couple of times, but it eventually shatters. Don't give up after one try. Are you a science fiction fan? I have some good news for you then. Turns out that flying cars may be closer to us than we think. And it's not just because they look cool. Manufacturers are looking into developing such vehicles for practical reasons too. For starters, our standard roads are getting pretty congested as time goes by. We'll need some other means of transportation in the future to be able to cope with a large number of vehicles. You can find loads of flying car concepts online for all preferences. There's one that looks like a giant drone and another one like a mini airplane. The simplest designs just took a car and put wings on it. Some cars will light up a snowflake on the dashboard every now and then. In case you're wondering, it's a sensor, and a pretty important one too. It shows the exterior ambient temperature. It gets activated when there's a road warning due to a sharp drop in temperature. It may sometimes even come with an audio warning or a message on your dashboard to inform you that the roads may be getting icy, so you can either adapt the speed or change to the appropriate tires if necessary. Cars these days aren't just adapted for the cold season. They come with cool features to help out during the summer months, too. I'm talking about those neat sun visors. Check your car to see if it has this added bonus feature. We know they twist to help the driver out even when they're not driving directly toward sunlight. Some visors can also extend, so they can provide shade to a larger area. If yours can't extend, there's a simple solution. Buy a sun visor extender. You can even find them online. They work by being attached to your existing sun visors or the windows for better shade coverage and visibility. Now, your car might have another hidden feature. Well, it's technically not in the car, but in its tires. These days, some cars come equipped with foam-filled tires. They were created to fix the problem of air-filled ones that often went flat. Why? Well, because foam-filled tires have many of the same benefits as air-filled tires without the danger of leaks. Regular air-filled tires can sometimes lose air over time, even if there hasn't been any damage. In most cars with this feature, the tires are not completely filled with either foam or air. They have a mix of both. A bonus of these modern tires is that they make the cars quieter. Generally, electric cars make less noise, but because of that foam, they end up being as quiet as a cat. Some people like the fact that they're quiet, while others prefer that classic screeching or rumbling that vehicles make. But even people who like the sound of regular engines might like the quietness of these new models because they are still very fast. Hey, I drive one, and it's fun! You might have stumbled upon a button called AEB. It stands for Automatic Emergency Braking, and it's a feature that uses sensors to detect if a collision is going to happen really soon. When activated, it will automatically apply the brakes to try and prevent something bad from happening, or make it less severe. There are two types of AEB, one that only works at slow speeds and one that works at all speeds. If the car can't be stopped completely, the AEB system will try to slow it down as much as possible to reduce the impact. Many cars now have systems that can warn you if someone is walking in front of you and can even automatically stop the vehicle to prevent an accident. These systems use special sensors that can also detect bicycles and animals. However, a study found that these systems don't always work well, especially at night. Even if your car comes equipped with this added feature, it's crucial to always pay attention while driving and not rely solely on these systems. A little thing called Lane Centering Assist helps you stay in the middle of your lane when you're driving on the highway. It's not a replacement for paying attention to the road either, but it can help guide you through gentle curves. You'll still be in control of the car and can turn the wheel if you want to go in a different direction. 
Some systems give you a lot of feedback, while others are more subtle. Lane Centering Assist can't handle sharp turns, and in most cars doesn't work if you don't have the cruise control on. What's also cool about this feature is that if it senses you've removed your hands from the wheel, it'll give you the warning to return to the correct driving position. A lot of accidents can happen when you're reversing your car, like out of the supermarket parking lot. Parking sensors can help prevent these things from happening by using radar or sound to detect things that the driver might not see from his position. These sensors will make a noise or show a warning on the car screen to let the driver know something is there, like another car or a person passing by. If you're planning to have a road trip, you know how hard it is to adapt to various speed limits throughout the country. Traffic sign recognition is a technology that can help with that. It allows you to know what the speed limit is on the road you're driving on. It uses a camera to take pictures of traffic signs and display them on a screen in your car. This can be helpful if the signs are hard to see or if you miss them while driving. Some cars with this technology can even change their speed automatically based on the signs they see. Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious and it makes sense, but what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, People naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon-looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen-permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible. So if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all. But if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. 
the company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels, like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. If you look at it on the street, you'll think a fire hydrant is about three feet in height. But the actual size of the device used to provide water supply to firefighters all over the world is twice as large. That is, if you count the rest of the hydrant, which is hiding underground. They're mostly red, and it's not just a matter of urban design. First of all, they need to be of bright, easily noticeable colors, so firefighters can spot them fast when they need to. The choice of color depends on how much water the hydrant can hold. It can sometimes vary depending on the location, but here's the breakdown. A red fire hydrant can splash 500 gallons of water per minute, while an orange one at least 1,000 gallons. Green ones mostly process 1,500 gallons of water per minute, and the most plentiful ones colored blue can generally contain over 1,500 gallons. Hey bowling fans, isn't it super annoying when your bowling ball gets cracked? Turns out that most of them get damaged because of incorrect storage or spikes in temperature. Now come on and face it, since it's already cracked a bit, aren't you curious what's actually inside the bowling ball? Cause I sure am. Let's have a look. They mostly make the inner core of the ball of powdered metal oxides, like calcium or iron oxide. Then mix them with some resin and catalyst to harden the whole mixture. So that light bulb shape you now see inside of the ball is actually its heaviest part. It also influences how your bowling ball rotates when going down the lane. The same goes with spray paint cans. When you shake it, it makes a weird noise. But what is that thing in there? It's called a pea, and it's meant to hold the paint mixture in place and maintain its shape. They generally make it out of plastic, metal, or ceramic. It basically acts as a whisk to make sure your paint is well mixed together before you apply it to your surface of choice. Ever wondered how soda bottles keep that refreshing fizz for that long? Well, they have a little plastic ring fastened to the lid. They place it there to keep the gas from escaping and making the soda go flat, even if you shake it around in your bag the whole day. Speaking of things we use on a hot summer's day, wait, wait, don't put your baseball cap on just yet. Take a look at it for a minute and you'll notice there's a small button on the very top. Is it functional or is it just there for the sake of design? Way back when people started using fabrics to cover their heads, some say the button was actually functional. Since it's on top of the cap where the fabric panels come together, the top button helps keep the cap crown in one single piece. Now with recent advances in fabric and pattern design, the button is more of an aesthetic feature. It's used to cover up the joint point of the fabric panels. Your cap might not have a button at all, but don't you think a cap actually looks better with one? Cotton pads have two sides, and if you take the time to look at them carefully, they're actually different in texture. Just in case you've ever wondered why, the textured side is for applying makeup, and the even side is for removing it. Bookworms, this one is for you. 
dust jackets that come with a lot of hardcover books are not just meant to make your book look pretty. They also double as a bookmark. Just fold the pages you've already read underneath the inside of the jacket, and voila! Next time you reach out for your favorite shirt, take a look at the top buttonhole. It should be stitched horizontally, and all the other ones are vertical. Turns out that the dress shirt was designed this way since the first and the last buttons were the first ones to unbutton throughout the day. They then changed the direction of the buttonhole to ensure the shirt would stay nice and fitted before you're ready to take it off. These days we have so many variations of this awesome dessert that it's hard to imagine we've ever lived without it. You can find different types of cookie dough ice cream or even chocolate chip cookie cake basically everywhere, but the famous cookie wasn't actually invented until 1930. The story goes that a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield was preparing some chocolate cookies as she was waiting for some guests to arrive. She soon figured out she was out of baker's chocolate, a crucial ingredient for the classic cookies. To fix things up, she chopped up a block of semi-sweet chocolate, thinking it would eventually spread out evenly throughout the batter, given the heat of the oven. Things didn't necessarily go as planned. But hey, it's great they didn't because this is how she invented this modern dessert we now can't get enough of. And speaking of popular snacks, the potato chip is even younger than the chocolate chip cookie. Well, at least historically. There are many stories trying to explain how it was invented. One of them goes like this. A chef named George Crum, based in New York, put the chips together in 1953. He decided to try a different cooking solution when one of his customers didn't have nice things to say about his french fries. He said they were too thick and kind of mushy. Then, Crum came up with potatoes that were thinly sliced and fried until brown. People absolutely loved the dish, and they welcomed the first ever batch of chips with open arms. Ice cream, anyone? If the story is true, back in 1904 at the St. Louis World's Fair, one ice cream shop owner ran out of cups to serve his dish. So, he fashioned a waffle into the shape of a cone, and the rest was history. Okay, I'll admit it, chewing gum-like treats have been around since the ancient Greeks. So this one isn't particularly a revolutionary discovery, but the actual gum we buy today wasn't there until the late 1800s. An American inventor named Thomas Adams wanted to mix together different chemicals to create rubber. He tried and failed, for that matter, to play with chicle for his experiment, but ended up fashioning this neat treat. They still use chicle to this day to produce most chewing gums. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, you can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes be it pasta sauce or salad dressings. Hey, sometimes we miss our mouths. So just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in, one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck, keep your most used items at eye level. This way they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes, for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. You can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. 
It sometimes works better than lint roll-ups. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though, but it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store and, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. (laughs) It's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow. All because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. We ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. Seat belt on the passenger seats has a fabric loop. When put under a great amount of pressure, the stitches on the loop rip apart, so the excess fabric can assist in cushioning the passengers. The extra few inches can make a great difference within a dire circumstance. However, There isn't one on the driver's side. As the driver is so close to the steering wheel, it's safer for them not to have one. Seat belts were originally invented in the mid-19th century, though this technology wasn't brought into common practice until the 1960s. Pre-collision sensory technology has assisted with developing the safety of seat belts and other features to the next level. Effectively predicting a car's collision, the technology directs the seat belts to automatically tighten aligning the airbags, and ensuring the brakes will be preloaded to reduce shock. Every year, 6 million car accidents occur, which explains why all cars still must continue to develop safety features, not only to alleviate accidents, but to protect people more effectively within their cars. The materials that make up the body of cars only started getting replaced within the last 25 years ranging from aluminum and magnesium alloys to carbon fiber composites. These lighter materials not only enable a more fuel-efficient journey, but they also ensure that when a car is in an accident, its build provides a crumple zone. As a car hits another object, the crumple zone absorbs energy from the collision. Although this would appear to cause more damage to the car, it helps prevent impact on the passengers. Front and rear bumpers are very underrated and Due to their long history of being used in cars, you can't imagine a time we didn't use them. They were invented in the late 1800s. The bumpers evolved over the years to the point we don't even realize we have them. But they're there, quietly waiting under the outer covers, 
consisting of compressible foam or plastic around a rigid reinforced bar. All the windows of your car are made of glass, but the windshield is made of a shatterproof version. It's laminated, so whatever might hit it, you can be sure there won't be any shards of glass falling into the front seats. Normal glass was used up until the 1950s. As vehicles became more prominent, they made modifications to ensure safety. Airbags seem like another common feature that has always been there. In fact, they were originally invented in 1968 and were ahead of their time. They slowly gained popularity, and through safety precautions for cars, they eventually became mandatory for all cars to have only in 1998. They have since developed from just being an airbag within the steering wheel. Today, depending on the vehicle, they can be located throughout the car, ensuring all potential passengers will be protected. Crash sensors connected to an onboard computer detect when a collision occurs and trigger the bags, inflating within milliseconds and providing a cushioned safety within a blink of an eye. It can be difficult to predict the weather and even more so to determine traction on the road. In the late 1960s, anti-lock braking systems, ABS, were implemented in vehicles. Before that, they had been used in many aircraft, with designs going as far back as 1908. They soon became a necessity for all vehicles, ensuring traction is maintained on slippery surfaces and that there is complete control when braking. Today, ABS has advanced so much that the latest variations ensure further detection when there are strong crosswinds. Cruise control, initially invented in 1948, has been in constant development over many decades. Today, adaptive cruise control ensures that when the car is cruising at a constant speed and detects a slower car ahead, it will then adjust the speed to match the car in front. Other advanced variants may also ensure the car will make a complete stop once identifying that the car in front has done the same. It's easy to forget to have your high beams on when driving on the long and lonesome road for many hours. Automatic high beams are quickly becoming more common. High-tech camera modules can easily determine what type of light is passing through and help ensure when the high beam will be necessary. Although versions of automatic high beams have been around since the 1950s, they counted on light-sensitive sensors and were very unreliable. The new varieties can identify the sources of light whether it's from the sun, directly from a car's light, or even from the reflection on a sign, ensuring you won't cause issues with other drivers. It's a pain in the neck to have to ensure there isn't anyone creeping into that semi-visible corner, the blind spot, which causes around 400,000 accidents per year. Solar sensors within rear bumpers of vehicles and blind spot monitoring systems watch and identify adjacent lanes. They alert the driver that a vehicle may be in the lane beside them, whether by flashing lights on the dash or from beeping sounds. This way, they help to alleviate the many concerns the blind spot causes. 1.6 million road accidents are caused by texting and driving, and fatigue normally causes up to 10% of all car accidents per year. The driver attention monitor helps to alleviate both statistics. It works through sensors that monitor the car's movements and the amount of steering corrections to ensure the driver is paying attention to the road. When the system identifies that the driver isn't completely awake or is slightly distracted with their phone, it will prompt signals to suggest it's time for a break. Tires are among the most critical components for your car, with a close relationship with whatever path you take. Many safety features rely on the tires themselves for their own independent purposes. That's why it's super important to ensure the tires are always in top condition. Tire pressure monitoring systems check the air pressure of all four tires, ensuring you're aware when they need their pressure increased to avoid the risk of a blowout. The constant evolution in technologies continues to ensure you stay safe on longer stretches of the road. Lane departure warnings focus on the lines on the road, ensuring the car stays within. Whenever a car starts drifting over a line in the road without signaling to do so, the camera-based feature identifies and signals to the driver. The Lane Keeping Assist feature follows the same method of identifying when the car is intruding the bordering lane. When it gets too close, it will readjust the steering and center the car within its appropriate lane. Other features in more advanced cars have autonomous driving capabilities. 
the autopilot systems have taken cruise control to the next level. Not only does it allow the vehicle to steer itself in the intended lane while maintaining a set speed, but it also changes lanes when required, making the ride more and more efficient. Some safety features are only just making a trend in car models worldwide. For example, night vision using thermographic cameras to look out for pedestrians and animals nearby. It goes within the infotainment screen, facing frontwards and identifying objects from their heat signatures. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.